Welcome back to a, another video in a very brisk, uh, wintry England. <laughs> uh, today actually the, the weather's quite nice, hence why I've actually got the GTR out of the garage for a change. It's still a bit damp on the, on the ground, but yeah, the, there's not too many clouds in sight and it's, uh, it's warming up a little bit. So yeah, today, um, as the title suggests, we are going to be fitting, uh, along with some other bits, we're going to be fitting a one of one part. Now, I guess the title may be slightly clickbait, but I don't think it is. I think it potentially is maybe a one of one. Um, so yeah, let's, let's have a look at what I've got. So here is the box. So this was gifted to me by a very close friend of ours, Koyama-san in Japan, in Tokyo. Uh, I'll link his blog down below. It's really worth a check out. So, so Koyama-san works at the uh, Nissan Prince Tokyo Motorsport uh, Garage Shop. Um, he's always working on kind of lots of other Nissans, but yeah, a lot of GTRs, um, uh, Fair Ladies or 350Zs, 370s. Yeah, it's uh, amazing some of the work he does. I'll link his blog uh, down below. It's worth a check out, it is all in Japanese, but um, if you're using Chrome or something, you can just uh, use auto translate and it will translate it pretty well. So, but there's lots of pictures, he puts lots of pictures up, so that's really good. So uh, let's have a look what we've got in the box. So at first glance, as you will say, oh, oh. <laughs> see yourself there. You will say, ah, oh, it's just a rear view mirror, which, which it is, uh, technically it is a rear view mirror. But what makes this particular rear view mirror very special and a, a one of one part, I'm going to say, is this. So for those of you who can't uh, read these signatures, uh, we have two signatures here. The first one here is uh, Sugiro Matsuda. He is actually one of Nismo's racing drivers in the Super GT uh, championship in their number 23 car so I guess the 23 car is like their flagship uh, car so he was kind enough to sign this for me um, I even have a picture here of him signing it that is him again he has a blog uh, an Instagram uh, I, I will link those down below well worth a look at he's for me so he's, he's, he's basically one of my favorite racing drivers. The reason being is not only is he incredibly talented behind the racing wheel, incredibly talented. Um, second of all, he's actually a car enthusiast. Sometimes I feel like uh, racing drivers, of course they are car enthusiasts because you know, they're there racing. But sometimes I feel like they're way above league of normal people, but Sugio, Matsuda, he really is a genuine car enthusiast. Uh, not only obviously does he race in a, a really interesting, brilliant championship, well worth a watch if you've not seen it before. Um, he's also done other racing um, through his career, but he is a genuine car enthusiast in so much as he, ha he actually owns a lot of uh, Nissan cars himself. Um, some really amazing ones like a 400R he owns um various other ones it, but he's always doing something car related whether it's you know dri driving in his championship driving to like Daikoku or just generally drifting he um he has a Sylvia that he does drifting in um yeah he, he's always doing something car related and for me that really speaks his passion for um f for cars so yeah he's a yeah definitely someone I admire um, yeah really cool so then moving on from uh, Sugiro Matsuda is Kiroyoshi Ke uh, Kato 
Kiriyoshi Kato. Um, basically, he is uh, one of the brain children for developing uh, the R33, the R34, the 350Z or Z33, uh, along with many other cars. He raced in Super Taikyu for a period, which was uh, kind of before um, Super GT, I guess, or a similar championship. So he is also someone who uh, has remarkable history um, with the development of this particular, uh, you know, this car, the R33. So that's really amazing. And to have both of those sign the same mirror, I think warrants it as a, a one of one piece. <laughs> So yeah, so that's the story behind this. So here is my mirror and let me try and get it in focus if I can. You can see along this bottom edge here, um, it's kind of, I'm not sure if it's dirt or the actual chrome or mirror part of it is actually starting to come away. Um, and also at the top here, yeah, you can just about see it there, just about see it. And that was kind of really bugging me is just a little pet peeves really. So definitely that was something that I wanted to swap out um, with this other mirror, just because it will get rid of kind of that, that dirty mark almost around the edge. So while I've got this taken out, one of the other things I wanted to tackle is um, some soundproofing. As you guys know from another video, I've been soundproofing like the doors. Um, one of the things that I know that Nismo does on one of the CRS models is they put some sound insulation into the ceiling so that's something I want to do basically once I've got this uh, the old mirror down that's one of the fixing points for the roof lining so the idea being is I kind of want to take out the roof lining drop it down and basically put a little bit of soundproofing up there yeah let's uh, let's have a look so it was an excuse to spend a bit of money I guess <laughs> uh, I bought myself some trim removal tools I've never had them in the past and that's really just through laziness to buy one I guess <laughs> um, and yeah it has suffered that I have broken parts in the past because um, I've just not had these trim removal tools and they're, they're so cheap so cheap so yeah let's um, put these to use and let's start removing some of these um, pieces. I think from what I can make out the driver's side here, um, I think I've got to remove this A-pillar uh, piece, at least pull it back slightly. I'll have to remove both the uh, sun visors, the mirror of course, and I believe there's two fixing um, nuts in both of these lights, or maybe just the middle one to keep up. I may also actually looking at it, I may have to rem remove the uh, B and C pillar uh, trim pieces potentially, or at least pull them down slightly. So yeah, let's get to uh, removing some things. So no real order to this. I'm just gonna pop out this lens cover for this light. Uh, okay. <laughs> sure it actually has anything holding it in. I wonder if it's just a case of pulling it down. Bro. Yeah, so there we go. I mean, that's the beauty of, of having these kinds of tools is because they're plastic, they don't really damage anything. Um, a bit of dust coming down there. Uh, so yeah, I can see there's, um, it's just plugged in up here. So I guess we just unplug that and that's uh, the first piece removed. I don't see anything else. Uh, there might be a clip there. There's just a clip at the front edge of this. So we can use one of the other tools, maybe this one, to just pop him off. Oh. Yep, yeah, so that was just held in with this tiny little, uh, <laughs> with this tiny little um, popping kind of clip. So he's off now. That's this front part. We'll unplug this um, light. That's it. 
Um, something I would like to do maybe is upgrade these lights to LED kind of lights, but that'll be for a future, a future episode. <laughs> so the next one we will do is the center one. So we can pull this out, hopefully. Maybe a different tool. Is this one any better? Nope. Ah, that's better. So again, just you just pop the lens out. There's a little indent there. Pull that down again, full of dust. So yeah, I'm pretty sure there's, yeah, I'm pretty sure these two screws here hold the assembly up to the uh, kind of skin of the roof. We'll get a screwdriver and we'll pop that off and then we can drop that down. So we just undo these screws. I thought I'd give you uh, probably a closer, better view. So you're just undoing these. There we go. That's what you're left with. So it looks like these screws are retained, which is helpful. But yeah, so again, it's just plugged in. So we will remove that plug on the back there. And yeah, then we'll move on to the sun visors, the mirror, and we'll go from there. Now there is a small modification I want to do to this lighting, which I'll probably show you another time. Yeah, so on to the next, let's get these mirrors and sun visors removed. I'm gonna remove this little mirror as you spotted. This little mirror is basically so I can see what Violet is doing in the back seat, just to keep an eye on her. <laughs> so this, I think the mirror, this um, shroud part just unclips, I believe. Yeah, unclips, so we remove that. And then it's just three screws in here, which are not captivated, so don't drop them. Yeah, so that is the old mirror out. So the sun visors, I think, probably there's just a screw underneath here. So I think you just pop off this back cover, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, so that just pops off. And then there's one screw there. And I'm guessing I do this side as well. I think while I've got these um, sun visors off, I think I might give them a bit of a clean because they are a bit, you know, manky. And I'll probably end up giving the whole roof lining a clean because why not while I've got it off? So there's another two screws under this uh, mounting. So let's get them out. So he's definitely clipped in there somehow. Um, not exactly sure how or where. There's one screw one is here. So that's come off really easy. Um, yeah, definitely gonna give that a wash. Yeah, so that is that whole piece pulling away. But from this part, trying to figure out how it's, I think it's just gonna pull out. I mean, that's the problem with working on older cars is if you break something, it's generally probably gonna be expensive to replace it especially these little parts. So I really want to take a bit of care getting this off. I mean, I think I can see I need to kind of almost pinch it in. So that's why I'm using this kind of a forked part of this clip remover to try and get in there and prise it together. So I've managed to get it down. Um, it is slightly broken. <laughs> Um, not sure how you really can get this off. So yes, essentially it's it's pegged in 
one end and then the other end uh, there's two clips as you can see these these clips so you have to almost prise them together really um, and then it should just pop out so we'll see I think it'll be fine I mean at the end of the day it's, it's screwed in there anyway so on to the uh, ape cover I guess so I'm just gonna sneak in with this tool here and hopefully pop it off I guess something like that Let's pop that off. And I think that is it. I think we can sneak this over the top. Yeah, brilliant. Awesome. That is off. So this uh, A pillar trim is just held in with these types of clip. So you just have to basically pop them off, pop them out um, to get it open. So we've got this side all freed off now. So it's now to release the other side. So we can just, I think, just pop these. Definitely gonna have to take this um, handle off. If I can figure out how. Just clips off the covers by the looks of it. I could actually get my nail in there to do that one. So that was handy. So that's the handle off. Um, again, I think it's gonna be the same deal with this, is it's just gonna be popped in there. So let's get our tool, and I'll probably head around the other side to pop it off. So we're just gonna do the same again with this tool. Prise it in there and pop it off. There we go. Um, yeah, so just pop that off, give that a little tug, and then that is off. Um, so I have some tweeters in here uh, in the actual uh, A pillars, so I don't want to remove them so all i'm doing for now is kind of hopping it over and laying it across the dashboard so yeah moving on from that there's one small black plastic clip here so we'll just get in there and pop him out he's out then means I think the whole of this front section Ooh, is free now. Um, so, and I need to take off probably these further back. We'll take the handles off and then pop them off. I don't think I need to fully remove them, but we'll have a look once we get it down, I think. So I'll hop in the back and we'll go from there. So in the back now, so I think I've got to remove this handle first. So we'll get to that. Just pop them down. And undo. That's the handle off. Looks like they are captivated maybe slightly in here. So that's good so we won't lose those. And then I believe, if I get the right tool, I believe we can just maybe pop this off. I don't really want to fully remove it because I think I'm gonna to have to undo the seat belt and I don't really want to do that. Yep, I think I'm going to have to remove the seat belt. But I guess if that's what it has to be, yeah, that looks like that's, that is the only thing holding it on. So um, let's get that removed. So it's got 14 mil head on it. You can just 
crank that off. Just undo him. There we go. We'll let him relax into that part there. Yeah, and sure enough, that is gonna be. So it looks like that's uh, pretty much free and um, released now. So let's do the other side and then, uh, yeah, we'll get this, this uh, headlining out. Um, so it's released now, um, but I'm stuck in here with it. <laughs> so I now need to just rest it like this I'm gonna get out of the car and then, uh, yeah, we'll get this headlining out. Not sure how is best to actually get this out. Um, I guess like this maybe. And we're out. Interestingly, when taking it down, it does look like there is some kind of sound deadening up there. I don't know if that's OEM. Uh, that piece fell down from the back. That piece is obviously still up there. That piece is there. It's interesting that I'm not sure if that's OEM or not really. Uh, either way, we'll probably keep it, but I'm gonna put on those panels some of the dead mat that you saw me put inside the door cards or the, the doors themselves and the metal work. And then, uh, yeah, we can start putting this all back together. So I've pulled off the um, old insulation. I'm pretty sure it's not factory, just because it's not incredibly neat, uh, unless it's shifted over the years, but it doesn't seem to be placed in like a perfect alignment with the roof panels, but also that may be how it came from factory. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly, hopefully, yeah, scrape off this excess fluffy stuff all well, the best of it I can get off anyway um, also at the back here where the original roof lining sticks to I noticed over the years that it had actually come away from um, from them I think it's just double-sided tape maybe sticking it to them um, but that had kind of drops down so if you were eagle-eyed and were looking from the back, you could see a gap from the headlining where it started to sag down. So that's another thing we'll address when we put this back up. So it's gonna be lots of birds with one stone, really. Um, there's also something I'm going to do for a later modification. Um, so I'll probably, I might include it in another video. Let's see. But let's uh, get this fluffy stuff off. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll get the other side down all cleaned up. I'll give it a wipe down with some cleaner and then we'll start thinking about putting some soundproofing up in here. So here we are with some pre-cut bits. I've measured them, cut them, I've cleaned the surface. So we're gonna basically stick this up in here. I've got a roller. Now this hasn't been too successful in the past, this roller, but I think on this occasion it might actually work quite well. Um, so yeah. I haven't covered the full area because I don't think you really need to. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the Nismo CRS stuff just has a couple of pieces here and there. Um, I've just cut one big piece just because I've got plenty spare. So um, yeah, let's uh, get sticking, shall we? Like that, I think it's going to be good. that's this side done I just want to make sure it's really stuck on there obviously it's got gravity working against it now I've been thinking about how I'm gonna stick these 
pieces back in. I'd like to keep them just because I think they will offer some kind of, if nothing else, thermal insulation. But I haven't really come up with an idea yet. I think they were just stuck on with some kind of like carpet glue. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't plan on having them down again. So, I mean, carpet glue probably isn't a bad idea. But yeah, let's uh, get the other side down and then this back piece done. So I've finished putting in the soundproofing on the headlining now. I think it's made a slight improvement, could be placebo, but. <laughs> so the next thing to do is I guess get these um, fabric pieces put back in there. Um, I think I will glue them to these um, soundproofing mats and yeah we'll go from there so i've got the uh fabric -y, woolly stuff stuck up there now um you can see it drooping down in some of these corners that's because i only wanted to put glue on the actual soundproofing that i put up just because um yeah then it doesn't stick to the actual metal of the car so yeah once the uh headlining goes back up that will push all that back up anyway but i'm pretty pleased with that it's uh looking pretty good i guess um let's think about getting this roof lining back in I haven't really decided what I'm going to do on the back edge here. You can see it sticks to these um, four pads, one, two, three, four. Um, not sure how I'm going to stick that down yet. I will have to think about it. So I think that's as far as I can go right now. So join me in a couple of seconds in YouTube time um, to having them cleaned and having a solution for those back four squares. Uh, yep, yeah, catch you in a bit. Hey all, we're back again, uh, a couple of days later in real life, um, but a couple of seconds for YouTube time. So where are we? So I've got some double-sided, real strong double-sided tape that I've put on these four patches at the back here. So hopefully that should keep the headlining up there um, and not let it sag anymore. Um, I've cleaned the headlining and I've cleaned the sun visors. Basically what's left to do, I think, is just refit it all. Yeah, I'll uh, go grab the headlining now. That's probably the first thing we need to get back in here. Um, not sure how I'm going to do it exactly, but yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to shimmy in like I did, uh, getting it out really. And then yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So I took it with the, took it out with the seat all the way forwards and folded forwards. But now I wonder if it's easy to put it in. I think it might well be. So I didn't take the um, B and C pillar out on the driver's side but yeah so I can slot that back in just as I've done um, this side to reach up so, I think... so I've got two clips that I need to put in here on this side here and on the other side that will keep it up for the majority of what we need to do um, where did I put them in the middle here actually? That's the headlining back in again. I've now got the um, tape peeled off and pressed up. It's looking much, much better. Yeah, it's not sagging at all now. It's, 
that's really good. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, I guess we need to start fitting it all back in again. Um, we'll start with this passenger side A pillar back to the B pillar now and then we can also put the seat belt back in. One thing I have noticed being in here, I need to give this a good hoover out because it's quite dusty in here. I'm not sure why it's got so dusty, but whether it's from all the fluff from above the headlining maybe. Let's, uh, let's get that A pillar in and we'll go from there. Just need to put this down the side there. And, ah uh, yes, we'll put it behind this B pillar. I think it clips in there, behind there. That looks pretty good. Just a case of um, clipping it all back in. A case of screwing that back into there. Right, just need to do the grab handle in the back here. We can also start thinking about putting these lights back in. Okay, so let's get the seat belt back in. Do this handle this side again make sure we've got the up arrow facing up light I guess. Make sure we plug it in before we put it up. There we go. Working. Like I said um, one thing I'd like to do in the future maybe is upgrade these to LEDs um, but I'd probably like to keep the natural kind of yellowish tinge of halogen um, or filament bulbs just because white is sometimes just a bit too in your face I find um, yeah cool so we need to put the lens cover on okay so we'll get the a pillar in now Sneak him in behind the B pillar. That's it, like that. Just clips in there on the B pillar, and then we can just um, this is the driver's side sun visor. like that. Ooh, that's that one done. Uh, now onto the, the passenger side. Uh, we'll put this light in first actually. There's just one little black clip if you remember. It goes in like that and then this light power goes in there. Turn him off. Yeah, goes that way. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We just need to put that uh, sun visor back on, which is 
here. We'll do that next. We'll put the uh, passenger side on now. Pretty much exactly the same process as the driver's side. That's it, he's on there. So last is just put these, this clip on here with one more screw. Now I did break this clip can see this there should be another one this side to keep it in there I think it will hold with one but as a matter of course I have ordered um, a couple I believe they might be discontinued so it might be a little bit difficult getting hold of it but I have placed an order um, and I haven't been told that it's not in stock so I'm hoping they have but yeah I mean it's it's holding in there really well so I, I think it will be fine so we'll put this clip on. And then that is the last. That's the sun visors done. So basically all that we've got left to do, I believe, is just the mirror. Yeah, so we'll go back to what the actual reason for this video was is to fit this one of one signed mirror. Basically, I think we just need to uh, screw it in there now. There we go. God, that's much cleaner, much cleaner than uh, the other one yeah that's really good happy with that so here we are now finished um, headlining back in everything back together mirror back in which is great um, so we've got a little bit more sound editing up there so it'll be interesting to see if that kind of makes any difference I'm not sure if it will or not I'm not any kind of professional uh, in installation of sound editing but um, I think it might make a difference. I mean, uh, Nismo puts uh, in their CRS cars some sound editing similar to that. So it must maybe make some kind of difference. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, really pleased with how it went. Um, broke one of the little clips for the um, sun visors, which I've ordered a replacement for. But it is holding up uh, absolutely fine. So I don't see there being an issue with that. That's the end of this episode. Hope you've all enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something if you're taking down the headlining on one of these cars. Uh, and I hope you also liked my one of one part. Uh, yeah, really pleased with that. Uh, it's, it's already made a huge difference just not seeing that kind of scabby edge of the old one. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. See you later. Bye.